good, YouTube? It's your boy 2K the God, my man Sus. What up? Welcome to the Gods of Boxer Talk. Now, as you can see, I got my man Kashad. He's on the show for the first time. Kashad, man, go ahead and let him know who you be and where you from. How y'all doing, YouTube? Uh, Kashad Hall. I freak with the, the YTBC or LDBC, as my boy 78 be saying. Uh, appreciate that new media from Little Rock. Right. You know, happy to happy to put it down with the guys of boxes and talk, man. Yeah, yeah. So, That's what's up. One of the more knowledgeable cats out there that I've chopped it up with in a lot of them Google Plus groups, man. All right. So for this segment, we're gonna do two uh, breakdowns of the uh, fights that are coming up this weekend. Right now, we're gonna have uh, Robert Easter versus Richard Comey. I said Kami like a motherfucker on last night's podcast, man. I was tearing mm -hmm. that boy name up, man. Richard Comey, <laughs> and then we're going to do whack-ass Daniel Eugene Rutherford Jacobs <laughs> versus Sergio Moore. The rematch that does not need to fucking happen. So yeah. first off, I'm going to go ahead and go into the fight that matters. Uh, Robert Easter, man, he's 17-0 with 14 knockout. He's 5'11", 76-inch reach. He weighed in earlier today at, at 134 and a half pounds. And we got Richard Comey, the little uh, uh, less known, lesser known fighter. He's 24 and 0, 22 knockouts, five foot nine. He boasts a six and a half reach disadvantage at 69 and a half inches, and he weighed in at 35, 130. My man shaking his head like, damn, 135 <laughs> pounds. Now. Since my man Kashad is already showing the body language, I'm going to go ahead and let him break it down, man. What you think of this fight, B? First of all, I want to show props to About Billions, the only fighter I rock with out of there, mm -hmm. because Adrian Broner on bullshit. Uh, shots out to Robert Easton Jr., uh, very good fighter. I mean, to win this fight, like you said, he got a six and a half inch reach advantage on him. Stick the jab in his face. And uh, don't go Paul Williams on us. Uh, <laughs> I, have, I have seen Robert Easter Jr. You know, kind of fight like a T Rex, and he's so tall, so that's, that's <laughs> good. But as long as he stays away from that, you know, I, I don't see him having any problems with with Comey. I'm glad you fixed that because I've been calling him Comey for years Hell since yeah. I knew who he was. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, so, mama named Comey. I'm gonna call him Comey. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's funny you said uh, Paul Williams, man, because this is exactly who he reminds me of, man. And it's funny you say he fights like a T-Rex because that's one of my criticisms. He gives up his fucking height and his reach advantage. He can get caught on the inside. When he's looking for the knockout, oh, he's giving that height and reach advantage up. Yeah, but when, yeah. When, he, when he's setting his opponent up to, to, to get him hurt, he's boxing from the outside. He's got, he, he, he brings all beautiful combinations. He's got a beautiful jab. My man is fast as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but as soon as he gets that motherfucker hurt, like, perfect example against Arginas Mendez. As yeah. soon as he gets him hurt, gets up on the inside, starts swinging wildly and shit. I mean, I'm like, bro, you're going to have to keep your fucking hands up against a guy like Richard Kamei that is very hungry. But I'm not going to break it down yet. I'm going to pass it to my man, Sess. What you think hey. of the fight, B? First off, let me yeah, thank the shot for being on the show. Appreciate mm -hmm. you. Um, Appreciate the chance. Oh, yeah, as always, glad to be on the show with my man 2K. Yes, um, but, you know, just to get hop right into this thing, I love this fight, man. You know, Hell it's for yeah. the, uh, I believe it's for the IBF um, uh, vacant title. Yes, sir. So yeah. both of these guys are very hungry, man. They've both been um, putting on some some good shows. Um, I think uh, Richard Comey <clears throat> has a 92% knockout ratio. Mm -hmm. Um and Robert Easter is not too far behind with, I believe, 82 or 82, 86% knockout ratio. So one thing's for sure is it's going to be fireworks when they do get up in there. Word. Um, I'm going to definitely go with Robert Easter. Um, he's just a taller, <laughs> longer, more talented, more skilled fighter. And um, he's the more athletic guy. I mean, he can do more with his body with him being that that tall, even though you guys did point out some things that he kind of unfavorably does, yeah. but at the same time, he's one of those dudes that that packs some pretty, that packs real good power in his punches, and he hits you in the right spot. That's the one thing that I do oh. like about 
Um, he does that I do good like. punch placement. Yeah, yeah, he has he has very good punch placement. But I definitely agree with you guys. When he's at distance, um, he has very good punch placement. I love his jab and I like what he does. Um, you know, just with his with with his movement and uh, just how he overall boxes. The reason why I have him getting Richard Comp Kome out of there <laughs> is because of some things that um, uh, Kome tends to do. And let me break him down for you. For one, um, he doesn't have a very good jab. You know, he's a fighter that he has sort of a uh, pawing jab. Or, oh, good shit. I'm glad you mentioned it, B. Yep. Yeah, you know he 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 has sort of a uh, sort of a pawing jab, man, and I just hate when he throws it. It's not sharp. It's real flimsy, if that's a word. You know, it's real loose. I guess I could say it's real loose, and um, it's like I said, it's almost like he, he he's pawing with it in order to line you up for yep. his right hand, but um, but it's not a strong enough punch to get Robert Easter's attention if he does want to come in on Robert. Because if Rich is going to win this fight, he's going to, to me, in my opinion, he's going to have to stay close to, uh, to, uh, to Robert. He's going to have to stay close to him, stay on top of him, be aggressive, and disrespect him. A lot of those guys out of, uh, out of Broner's camp, particularly the two most well-known guys, Broner and Robert Easter, I think the best way to get at them and to get under their skin is to disrespect them. You yep. have to dog yeah. them. You have to disrespect them. Yep. Um, uh, look Hell at Broner yeah. when he when he fought against Maidana. Now, disrespect. Fought, <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, look at Broner when he fought Maidana. Now, Comey is not a Maidana type of fighter, but I'm just talking about the level of disrespect that my that Maidana showed Broner. So. Yep. Another thing about Kome is he's got very, very, very predictable body rhythm. Okay, mm. when he's moving, he, he 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 does different things with his guard. Sometimes he go to the high guard. I've seen him kind of hold his right hand up higher than his left hand. He 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 changes stances with his hands, and he kind of has a has a uh, rhythm when he's coming at you. But it's very predictable, very, very, very predictable, and it almost, um, in my opinion, it almost comes off as if he's telegraphing some of his punches when he does stuff like that. It's too much movement, and it's because of his, uh, because of his jab being so lackluster, he tends to telegraph those punches, you yeah. know, because you don't pay attention to the jab; you more so pay attention to where his head is, so you can pop him whenever he does try to shoot a punch at you. Yep. Um, so, I, it, 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 and, and another thing is, he's not very fast. I mean, he's not fast at all. Oh, you know? um, and that was a problem that I've seen in the, and I'm a mess, I'm going to fuck this cat name up pretty bad. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, Ma, Mama Joev or some shit like that, YouTube. Y'all y'all know who I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't even going to uh, attempt that shit. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> um, but... This cat was beating, um, I had him beating Kome thoroughly for the first, for at least the first four rounds. He was a southpaw and he was hitting Kome with some very clean shots, which is another thing that I, that I got to touch on, his defense. He has a predictable body move uh, rhythm and I believe it affects his defense mm. because he's using so much upper body movement, you predict where his head's gonna be. So when you pop mm -hmm. him, he, 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 he's not defensively responsible with that type of a movement, yeah. you know? Gotcha. Um, and, and, and I don't want to shit on Richard Kome, but I'm just telling the people out there what it is. I still think it's a great fight because Kome does have a very, very, very good right hand. Absolutely. Okay. So what Kome needs to do to win is he needs to put Robert on his back foot, make him uncomfortable, disrespect him, and let his hands go. That's another thing that I did like about Kome is that he will let his hands go when he needs to. And he frequently does. But again, he's a smaller guy and it, it's just his style of fighting that I think will favor Robert Easter Jr. Uh, Robert's very fast. He has a very commanding jab, very good right hand. And for those reasons, I'm definitely going to give this fight to Robert Easter Jr. Yeah. Also, 
It's going to be a an early to mid round stoppage. He will not. I didn't even get no prediction. Uh, oh, oh you got, I'm, I'm going right back to you. I already had that shit in mind. <laughs> Go, yeah. My bad, but he will not co mate out within within six rounds. After yeah. the first round, he's going to get co rhythm and his timing down. Yeah. Okay? It may look competitive in the first round or it may be in the earlier parts of the second round. But okay. after that, he's going to drop right hand bombs, left hooks, and uppercuts on Kome because of the position of his head. So mm. I'm not, this fight will not go past six rounds in my opinion. Damn, I 100% <laughs> agree. Uh, Kasha, what you want to add, B? I right, yeah, man, I got, I got two quick things to add in his mm -hmm. comments to what Seth said, man. First, Seth, you drop some, you drop some gems, man. Oh, uh, hey, uh, hey. So the first <laughs> thing I want to say is, when you guys brought up disrespecting, uh, you know, the about billions camp in the, in the ring, like Robert Easton and Adrian Brown. I'm gonna tell you why that shit works. It's, it's, this is why it works. Man, they train in like comfort. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, they, don't, they don't put themselves in, you know, I guess uh, touchy situations in training, or they don't work on what they can't do. Right. Like Adrian yeah. Brown, the next pressure fighter he sees is gonna, beat his ass again because yes. he ain't worked on it yes so like eventually robert easter i'm picking him to win this fight by stoppage too i don't know much about come but i mean from what seth said he sounds like a philip endo and it sounds like we could use floyd uh, yeah. his comments when he said damn i didn't even uh, think about that a hurt fighter is a dangerous fighter Word. And that's what Robert Easter needs to look for in this fight because he gives up his height so much. I'm, I mean, Kome might not have a jab, but if Easter yeah. you know, laying there working in it with the TX, the two X arms, and Kome, <laughs> you know, throw a hook at him, give him one of them Danny Garcia no lookers, yeah. he, he <laughs> might he might put him out. So I mean, yeah. oh yeah, I mean, if, if, I, I definitely I can see that happening if he. If he pins Robert up against the ropes, pin him up against the ropes and just let your hands go. Uh, um, uh, Robert Easter has this, it, 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 he did better in the Argenis Mendez fight, but in his earlier fights, he was using that Floyd Mayweather type of a shoulder roll and he was eating some pretty clean punches. Mm -hmm. So hey, that's when I'm, you know, that's definitely what I'm gonna be looking out for. If he does some shit like that, Kome may be successful at, at, uh, at getting on the inside of him. Man, yeah, both of y'all made some good points, man. Kashad, I like that point <clears throat> that you yeah. made about Danny Garcia, the no look of the Magic Johnson, no look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sir. You know what I'm saying? Smacking it. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Man, my, my main issue with Kome is this. Uh, uh, Sus, I 100% agree. Well, I could 110% agree, but you left 10% out. Ah oh, damn! <laughs> One of the biggest things you you touched on is jab. One, uh, he, he leaves that motherfucker out there too. While he's pawn with it, he throws that bitch and he stays like this for for a couple seconds, just enough time for a good counter puncher that has a high work rate to come right over the fucking top with a straight right hand. Mm. That's exactly what Robert East is gonna do, or he yep. can do it. Yep. Hope yep. he's gonna do it. Um. But one of the biggest things that you left out was Richard Comey needs mid-range distance, B. Now, mm. these motherfuckers on, on these different uh, uh, groups, there was a, a, a poll, and it was a, a picture of uh, Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, GGG, and somebody else. They said, who has the best inside game? Motherfuckers was picking Triple G. Now, uh, I know, I know, but hold on. <laughs> hold on. Now, now, this one dude, he put an educated reason. Like I said, all I ask is for motherfuckers, I respect everybody's opinion, but all I ask is for motherfuckers to break down why <laughs> they feel the way they feel, right? So I'm looking at all these GGG comments with no breakdown, so I don't respect those. Mm -hmm. But my man came in there with an educated response. He basically talked about GGG's inside game, how it pretty much goes to the body on the inside on cats, and it stops him from wanting to move because of the power. Now, while he's right about going to the body and stopping cats wanting to move, 
it's not on the inside Thank this is you. what people have mixed up between mid-range distance and inside fighting okay yep. triple g needs to be at the mid-range distance so he can get the best leverage on his punches when he gets on the inside he smothers himself same with sergey kovalev and same with richard comey okay yep. The only, the, probably the biggest name on Komei's uh, resume, Gary Buckland, who's not really a fucking nobody, but he's a dude, he the dude from the UK, and he's known there. He's the biggest name on his resume against Gary Buckland. Buckland was pushing Komei up against the ropes and getting in beautiful inside body work. Why? Because Richard Komei was uncomfortable on the inside. Whenever mm. Buckland would get that close, Komei would try to create distance with his shoulder or his forearm, and then that's when he would get the full extension on his punches. He needs mid-range distance. The mm. problem with that in this particular fight is because mid-range distance is too far away <laughs> from fucking Robert Easter, a guy that has a six and a half inch reach advantage on you, B. Yeah, and he yeah. can actually throw punches from the outside just as strong as if he's throwing them from the inside. That's the problem. So <laughs> if you coming in and you're like, nah, I'll stay a good, you know, two feet out, throw <laughs> my punches from here. Well, you about to get your motherfucking ass tagged. Yeah. And you about to get tagged until you get put in submission. So you need to be on the inside. You need to put your head in fucking Robert Easter's chest. You, you need go. to get to the body. You need to put him on his back foot. You need to get that motherfucker's back on the ropes. Like yeah. he's like, this is shit. He don't know what to do. So he's just going to be like this the whole fucking time. That's what you need to do. A, B, but can he do it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, damn. Like somebody moving that nigga around. Damn. Like he, that's what Komei has to do and to be able to do that you have to have a well educated and developed inside yeah. game that's yeah. why I don't think he wins this fight B and I'm in unison with Sess and Kashad on this one I think it's gonna be possibly a late mid to late TKO I'm gonna go ahead and go against uh, 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 give a give a extreme prediction I'm gonna say he <laughs> knocks Komei out in seven that's what I'm okay. gonna say seven Word. rounds seven rounds all right, so now the fun is over. Now we got to get into the bullshit fight nobody wants to see. Oh, man. I mean, hey, Kashad, dog, was you? Let me ask you a question, dog. You know, let me fix my bucket real quick. All right, yo, so today, you know, you, you chilling. Maybe you at work, maybe you at home, maybe you in the gym doing whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? Was you really at wherever you was at thinking like, damn, yo, tomorrow, nigga, we got that Danny Jacobs, Sergio <laughs> Moore. I'm like, I can't wait. You know what I'm saying? Was you doing that? Because I wasn't. <laughs> I actually, to be honest, man, Danny Jacobs lost some cool points with me as a mm -hmm. fighter, man. I was digging the, 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 you know, the comeback from cancer, you know. Yes. I'm sure we all lost some relatives to, yeah. to such a dangerous disease, but yeah. uh, I was digging that. But man, dude lost respect with me when he let Sergio Moore lay him down. Because oh my God. Sergio oh, yeah. Moore, man, like, you know, just look at his, his resume, look at the people he's punching, you know, <laughs> look at look at their faces when the fight is over. It's like Danny Jacobs, he showed that, you know, he's explosive, but I don't I'm not I like I said, all I can say is he lost points with me. Yeah, yeah, it is. He don't he have this. He don't mine, have this. But yep. it's, he talks so eloquently. He carries himself like a professional. He, you know, you have every reason to like him outside of the ring, except Absolutely. what he does inside the ring. Absolutely. You know? When yeah. he let when he let that man lay him down, like I ain't gonna lie, I didn't watch the rest of that fight. I, I you know, I know he won <laughs> round of the year. I know he won a knockout or, or something like uh like um what's his name? Sergio Moore like broke his ankle or something. Yeah. yeah. But, I'm not lying, man. Right hand to God. When I seen Sergio Moore lay that man down, I changed the channel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I, can't, I can't rock with this dude. Like, come on, <laughs> man. Come on, Danny. It, yeah. It's like, I like him. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, I was really, you know, keen on the, you know, Danny Jacobs, man. You know, he'd get GGG to run for his money. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, bro, you let Sergio Moore smack you to the ground, man, yep. real fast. Legs <laughs> yep. all open. 
I, yo. I don't like this fight. Um, <laughs> he, uh, I think Sergio Mora was saying he's old it because he like broke his ankle and he laid him down. So from Sergio Mora's standpoint, I understand Absolutely. why he wanted a rematch. Absolutely. But Danny Jacobs, you know, you came out, you said, you know, they weren't trying to play, pay you what you wanted to be paid for the Gennady fight. Okay, I can understand that K2 kind of shady. But then you come out and you say, well, this Sergio Moore too, this is a stay busy fight. I'm like, hold on, motherfucker. I can think of a lot of middleweights. I would rather you knock he, who goes Centina Jr. out. Or yeah. maybe maybe fight uh what's the guy? Gennady's um uh, his uh mandatory from Tor- Toriano Johnson. Uh, uh yeah. about, um Kersitzi. Yeah. I'm thinking about a bunch of different fights. I did not want to see Sergio the Latin Snake Mora. Yeah. Um yeah. in this fight. So I agree. I mean, I'm gonna give it to Jacobs. I'm really only watching this card because of the Kome Eastern fight. You know, I said yeah, I rock with much. him. <laughs> I, I don't really I don't care about this. I you know, shots out to PBC for putting fights on, you know, you know, free television and stuff, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Al Heyman, as all Heyman fighters say. But <laughs> <laughs> you could kept this one, bro. Like I understand, you, you know, you, you probably Sergio Mora manager, and you know he was probably bitching, you know, talking about a rematch because he broke yeah. his ankle. But it's like, man, come on, you got outclassed, man. It's like yeah. uh, if Danny Jacobs doesn't go in and completely like annihilate this dude, a la Peter killing, uh, like uh, yeah, ass yeah. whooping. Yeah. I mean, I just ain't gonna watch the next one. So, yeah. um, I mean, my pick is Jacob by whatever the fuck win. <laughs> I, I don't care. Like, it don't even matter. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. with you on that one. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Go ahead, Seth. All right, all right. Man, I'm I'm pretty much with Kashad. I'm not really too big on this fight, but uh, it's probably for a bit of a different reason. You know, um, like I said, I... I agree with everything Kashad said, but um, I'm not too big on this fight because I'm not real big on Danny Jacobs right now. Right. You know, so I, I, I guess, <clears throat> I guess, um, I guess they're gonna do the fight over, you know, because of uh, exactly what Kashad said. Sergio Moore broke his ankle or rolled his ankle, whatever, in the first fight. Um, and here's the thing about Danny Jacobs: for one. I've never been <laughs> high on him. Uh, to me, he was he he's a guy that has a lot of power and is a true middleweight. And I respect that about him because you know he always comes in shape. He's always the the more physically in shape guy when he gets in the ring. But the thing about Jacobs is he tends to wait. Uh, uh, to me, he tends to wait too long. You know, and 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 I'm going back to the. Dimitri uh, uh, Pirog fight. Yep. <laughs> that was a fight where, and, and you know, I don't, I don't take nothing from Pirog because I, I, I do believe fundamentally he's a decent fighter. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a good fighter. I'll give him that. I was gonna he's say decent. Pirog got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just think a guy like Jacobs and what he should be bringing to the middleweight division, right. he's not living up to that. Mm-hmm. In, my, in my opinion, he's not. You know, um, now I'll give him I'll give him props for the uh, Peter Quillen win and the way he uh, the way he dispatched Peter Quillen. That's what I want to see more of of Danny Jacobs. I want to see this kid have that killer instinct, go in there and get these motherfuckers out of there. Stop overthinking things. Right. If you go back and you look at the Sergio Mora fight, Jacobs didn't throw a punch. Uh, in their first fight, he didn't throw a punch um, until um, I think uh, a, a minute into the fight. He threw he threw his first punch at exactly around two minutes. Wow! You know, so that's the thing about Danny Jacobs is when he have when he has these guys like Dimitri Pirog and Sergio Mora, guys who are very unorthodox, very hard to figure out. He tends to spend the rest of the fight trying to figure them out. And I don't like that about Danny Jacobs. Um, like I said, with Peter Quillen, I, I I believe he got Quillen out of there the way he did because there's not too much that you got to figure out with Peter Quillen. He's not real flashy. He's got very explosive power. I, I definitely like that about Quillen. But Quillen's another dude that 
didn't have a jab until he was so many fights in. You know, so I don't really care too much for this fight. Danny Jacobs needs to go in there and first round Sergio Mora. You know, <laughs> get yeah. him out of there. Mora really shouldn't be shouldn't be in the same ring as um, as Jacobs. Nah, um, man. But let me say this. Let me say this. Sergio Mora could possibly beat yes, Danny can. Jacobs. Yes, he can. Yep. Okay. And it's and the uh, main reason is for what I said earlier, because he's so fucking awkward. Yep. Jacobs tends to overthink guys that are that are very awkward and that have um, that have good fundamentals. Sergio Moore is a very awkward fighter. I'm not too fond of his fundamentals, but I do respect what he brings to the ring for a guy that doesn't have any power. Right. Okay. So, and if, like I said, if you go back to the first fight, let us go to the knockdowns. Jacob's knockdown of Sergio Moore was a flash knockdown. He right hook. Him, yep. He caught him with a very good shot. It floored him. Very, if it, it floored Mora very fast, yeah. Mora got back up and he was composed. He was composed. He retreated a little bit yeah. um, to the ropes. Now, let's go to Sergio Mora's knockdown of Danny Jacobs. Danny Jacobs was legitimately <laughs> hurt. Yo, he was, he was okay. wobbly. He was still on wobbly legs even after he got up and they finished he, the round. Yep, 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 <laughs> yep, yep. Absolutely. That My tells me. Died. Jacobs, <laughs> Jacobs does not have a chance. Okay, he he's a guy that that like I said, he packs a lot of power, has a good right hand, very explosive right hand, but he does not have a chin. When a guy that has limited as limited power, um, I'm sorry. When a guy that has the power that Sergio Moore has legitimately hurts you and drops you and you get up yep. and you're shaky, you yep. don't have your leg, you yep. don't have a chin. You, you don't know? have so, a chin. So oh, yeah. that's now my approach in this fight. If I were Sergio Moore, I'd do exactly what I did in the first in the first few minutes of that first round before he got hit, of course. Go in there and start letting your hands go. Yep. Start throwing punches at him. Keep him in front of you and make Danny shell up. Yep. Make him put his hands up. Make him be, make him be more defensive than he is offensive. Yep. Okay, that's what Sergio has to do. Now he got caught in that first fight when he let himself get. He got way too close to Danny, and he he had <laughs> both, both hands down when he yeah, got he did. caught. Yep. So he needs to tighten up and, 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 and with more, I'm not expecting you no know, spectacular head movement or anything like that. Just keep your fucking hands up. That's keep it. your hands up. Keep throwing punches. Stay busy. Stay on top of Jacobs and force him to move backwards. That's yep. the thing about Danny Jacobs. That, that's another thing that I don't like about him. And, and it was in, a, uh, in the Dimitri Pirog fight. He spent a lot of that fight with his back to the road because <laughs> Pirog was yep. doing what he wanted to do. Yep. You know, so oh. and when you let guys like Sergio Mora start pushing you back, those guys, even though they don't have a lot of power, typically they're not afraid to really let their hands go because they got to land something. They got to keep something on you to keep you where they want you to be. Right. So yeah. that's what Mora needs to do. I, I, I <clears> mean, <throat> we all know what what Jacobs needs to do. All he really has to go in there. Uh, all he really has to do is go in there. Don't overthink. Sergio Moro's bullshit ass style. Don't, don't overthink it. Just be smart about it. Let your hands go um, and establish that jab from the first round. Keep it quick. Keep it um, stiff and in his face and land that fucking right hand. Yep. You know, um, and my final point and I'm going to make to Jacobs. Uh, I'm going to go back to Jacobs waiting. When you go back to the Peter, you go back to the first round of that Peter Quillen fight. The the, the the punch that he landed on Quillen was like one of maybe three punches he threw that round. Mm. You know, he waits too long. You know what I mean? Um, now, in that fight, I knew that fight was going to come down to whoever was first. Whenever you've got right. two big, whenever you've got two big punches, that's typically how it goes. They're both very wound up. Um, and it, a lot of times, the guy who establishes his dominant hand first typically wins the fight. Absolutely. Yep. So, but again, to me, 
that punch was one of three. That was all he needed, fortunately. But don't fucking wait. Do not wait. Jacobs, just go in there and do what you got to do. Get Sergio out of here. Hold but, on, Sus. Oh, yeah. we, we lost Kasha, but Sus, I'm going to go ahead and let you finish. Go ahead, man. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, just go in there and, um, and, and, and do what you got to do. My pick is, I'm going to shock a lot of people with this. I'm actually going to pick Sergio Mora. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I had I picked Sergio Mora in the first fight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, cause I had the only one that can verify that shit for me is my man Ace. He was there, and uh, I was telling him we was getting ready to watch it. He was like, "Who are these cats?" I was like, "You know, Danny Jacobs is this guy. Sergio is this guy. I think Sergio can beat him." And plus, I put money on it, Seth. I put Damn. money on it. Sergio was like a Sergio was like a plus three something. B. I put money on him. Wow. <laughs> Hey, you know what I'm saying? What I'm talking about. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I think um I think Sergio has a chance to win that fight. If he does the same thing like you said he did in the first fight, he has a great chance. Um one thing that that I think you left out about Peter Quillen, the reason why he got knocked down was because he was stalking Mora with both his fucking hands pretty much at his sides, like down by mm. his waist. Yes, and he yes, had his yep. fucking he had his fucking glass vase of a chin <laughs> sticking out uh, uh, past his chest. So yeah. it was an easy target for uh, for Sergio Moore to throw a left hook, a glancing left hook, one that he was on his back foot for. It mm-hmm. wasn't even a fucking left hand that had a whole lot of power on it because he was backing up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So... Yeah, man. So yeah, I, I think uh, I think it, it, it it's a possibility Sergio Moore can win this fight. I hope he wins this fight because yeah. it will backfire the plans that that you know Daniel Eugene Rutherford Jacobs had <laughs> in trying to hoard that title like Billy Ho Sanders is doing over in the UK. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So, all right, that's gonna conclude this segment. Uh, I'm gonna try to get uh, Kasha back on for the next segment. YouTube, uh, let us know what you think of both of these fights. Do what you do in the comment section. will be real. This is Real Talk for Real Fans. One.